I'm Aliza Sherman, and I'm the CEO of Elementa, and this is our Sunday Self-Care Sunday session where we speak with authors and experts and find out what they know about wellness. We're really looking for the exploration of natural remedies, plant medicines. Uh, we have a session coming up soon on homeopathy. We have a session on speaking your truth. Uh, we've got a session on cannabis flower and how to smoke and vape it properly. I mean, there's so many different topics we cover, not just cannabis and CBD topics, but this session we happen to have an author of CBD Every Day and a whole slew of other books. I'll have her tell you a little bit more about them. This is Sandra Hinchliff. And she is now based in the Oregon area. I'm coming to you from the Seattle area. And we're gonna to talk today about topicals. I know you all are excited to hear how to infuse your own topicals. And Sandra has been writing about this, writing about CBD spa treatments and DIY CBD products for quite a long time. So Sandra, could you let us know a little bit more about your background? So um, I, I have been a practicing herbalist for more than 30 years, and I actually started making topicals for myself, non-cannabis topicals, decades ago, um, because I found due to my um, anaphylactic, uh, anaphylactic allergy um, that... I could not use over-the-counter um, uh, over-the-counter cosmetic products. I had a lot of problems with this as a teenager. I couldn't use a lot of the same cosmetics that other people use due to these extreme allergic reactions that hospitalized me a few times. Oh my gosh! Yes, I carry EpiPens for life-threatening allergic reactions. And so before I ever made cannabis topicals, I started making spa things for myself um, many years ago. And so it was just kind of a natural progression. Um, when I got my first medical marijuana card in 2006, um, I discovered on the shelves, I don't know if you know about the history of topicals, modern topicals in the dispensary. Um, around 2000 and 2005, 2006, when California first opened up their first widespread opening of medical dispensaries, you started to see kind of a smattering of uh, different topical products on the shelves, usually a salve, um, sometimes a lotion. There's a pretty famous lotion company that was actually one of the first um, cannabis lotion companies, um, Doc Greens. I don't know if you've heard of them. I don't. Or I don't not. think I have. I wonder if anybody in our audience has heard Doc Greens. Doc Greens lotion. Haven't heard of it. Haven't heard of it. So yeah, it's, you know that was one of the first um, lotion brands, and so back then. Um, you know, when you would go to the dispensary, uh, these things, they were, they were available, but, oh yeah, she used to buy. Janet, um, Janet says she's, yeah. she's seen it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I used to buy yeah. it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, she's so, in California. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I think Doc Green's might even have out of state now. I'm not sure about that. Anyway, so, um, Topicals, that was sort of the beginning of the modern history. Of course, there's like an, an ancient history. Ancient, of, of course. We will, right. we will talk more about that um, in a minute because I have a new book coming that talks about that. But anyway, the modern history of modern, I would say, about a decade, when these things first started showing up on the shelves and people first became familiar with them. And at that time, there wasn't a lot of regulation. So you didn't really know what was in these topical products. Quite often, they were sold as novelty products. 
So someone would, you know, in other words, they, somebody would come into the dispensary. They didn't really tell you how much or what was in it. Oh, wow. Can't read lotion? I, whoever heard of such a thing, you know? And um, so initially these were thought of as, I, I, I hate to use the word novelty product. And in fact, there wasn't too much care or attention given to what was, I would say, with the exception of Doc Green, which mm -hmm. they, they were a really uh, mindful company when it came to this. But a lot of products that were just there for the novelty. And so that was a little disappointing to me because this is something I wanted to try. And I knew, well, if I try this, you know, I probably need to work on making it myself because I have all these issues with my allergies. Right. So that's when I started making, I started using, uh, you know, a lot of the things that I had used in the past to make things, to make salves and lotions and baths and, and other spa things for myself. And I applied some of that to making cannabis. Now there's, there are some difference between making the cannabis topicals and making a regular topical. Well, let's start. And, let's start okay. at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning here. Well, first of all, you didn't mention your books, and when whenever I have authors on, I always say mention your books, hold your books up. So okay. first, <laughs> we're basing this on CBD every day, which is That's right. We, I remember we were trying to figure out well, which book are we going to talk about, which topic. So this is one of your books, CBD Every Day, and it helps you uh, create your own topicals and spa treatments and all kinds of infused products at home. You also have a, another book. Now it just it just went out of my head. Another CBD book, CBD. Oh, spa. It, spa. What was the okay. spa? Cannabis spa. Cannabis but, spa. Uh, right and. You know, this this could be used with, um, uh, this was my first book. Okay, Can Cannabis Spy at Home, right, exactly. Right. Okay. Um, you know, this book that I was just referring to that we were going to discuss some of the ancient history, that is a book coming July 21st. And oh, great, and it's called, what is it called? CBD and Hemp Remedies. CBD and Hemp Remedies, excellent. All right, so before we go into history, I, I, I actually would really like to get into the practicalities first because okay. everyone is here to learn about uh, best practices when it comes to making your own topicals. That is uh, today's topic. So uh, one of the questions that I've always had, and I finally did my research, but I'd love to hear from you. What is the difference between balms, salves, lotions, and creams? Because we're really going to talk mostly about maybe balms and salves, or maybe you'll also mention how to get a lotion or a cream out of these ingredients. So can you tell us the differences? Okay. So lotions and creams are some, uh, lotions and creams are both water-based um, topicals. Um, this, lotions and creams in my book are always refrigerated. They're either frozen into cubes or they are kept in the refrigerator for a short period of time and used very quickly. This is and because, that's because not, yeah, the shelf life, right? Because they don't really have a good shelf life. If, if you are going to make a, a lotion or a cream and put it up uh, at room temperature, you need a preservative and you need a very powerful uh industrial preservative there's really no nothing natural that is going to preserve those ingredients with water once something has water in it it literally explodes with a microbial life within 36 hours if it's left out wow uh yes so okay. um so in, in all of the lotions and creams that you buy off the shelf contain a preservative. Right. Now that's probably fine for most people. You know, most people don't have a problem with these preservatives, but there are people who A, prefer not to have that, or B, for health reasons, they cannot use those preservatives. 
And so this is, this is the segment that I address, are people that have a preference for no preservatives and people who have, cannot use them for health reasons. Right. So when I make a lotion or a cream, I treat my lotions and creams as, as if they were a food product. Mm. And and so they are stored in the refrigerator. They're made in a very small batch, uh, and they are stored in the refrigerator for no longer than I don't know three to five days. I mean, I stored some lotions in my refrigerator as long as thirty days. Um, but generally, if I'm going to use a lotion or a cream, I'm going to make a really small amount. It's for a very specific purpose, like my my knee joints or something are really aching. And so I just make that cream or that lotion and I, I store it for a very short period of time. Now, now, the wait, other now thing, you, you mentioned freezer though. Hold on a second. You mentioned yes. freezer. So if you That's freeze a longer it, yeah. I was just going to say it should be a longer yeah. storage. What oh, would yeah. that storage length be? Well, probably freezer, you know, so that you have something fresh and it doesn't get freezer burned. I would say no longer than three months in a okay. freezer situation. Okay. Um, and I usually make little cubes and store the, you know, lotion cubes. That's kind of a neat idea. Them. So like maybe in an ice cube tray. You yes. Oh, that yes. is really, I've never even heard of that. I'm like, Frozen really, cool lotion. <laughs> really cool tips already. That's well, cool. it is kind of cool because when you, when you don't work with preservatives, you know, you have to think of, you have to kind of think out of the box of how you're going to um, make these things last at least. Uh, and, and the thing about the, um, the lotion cubes is that, wow, they are so cooling and relieving. You can take one of those cubes and kind of slather them on your body after a shower. Uh, mm -hmm. And they are, they are really awesome. So that's one. Um, so that's my sort of my practice in making lotions and, and creams. Now. Uh, yeah. Um, Balms and salves, right? You're going to okay. so, Yeah. So bombs and salves don't have water in them. So they are shelf stable. And this is an example of a salve. And this is actually, <laughs> um, this is my by the bed salve. And so this has, this has a bunch of um, CBD in it. And there, there's probably, well, CBD rich. So that means it does have some THC in it. But this is by my bed salve stuff and that I have been using on my hips lately because I have problems with my hips. Um, so a salve um, is kind of like this. And a salve and a balm. So I don't have an example of a balm right in front of me, but when I make balms, they usually come and uh, I pour them into a push-up um, dispenser. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, an application. Like a, right, like a push-up dispenser. Um, so they're a little more, they have more, um, more wax, more hard fat in them Got than it. a salve does. And ointment is even more... Um, you know, this is, this is a stab and you can see the texture of this mm -hmm. is kind of like that. And ointment is even more liquefied. It has okay. a fat for even oh, more liquefied. Yeah. So this is, yeah. so really it's the ointment, which is kind of oilier and more liquidy, this salve, which has a little more wax. So it's got some more substance to it, but it's still oily. Right. It's oily and waxy. Right. And then the Balm, the balm that is, is going to be waxier. Got it. Right. Now, okay. I, I have to tell you, though, when it comes to balms, I have seen people and I've seen descriptors of balms um, and like roll on. Yeah. Isn't that odd? Because so I balm roll on? Okay. Because I've described I'm... both ways either okay, I've, as I've, a I've... roll on or yeah. as a a solid, a more solid, um, right. Uh, push up. Cause I've seen the roll-ons more for oils cause it's liquefied. Yes. 
Yeah. And then I, and I love, I love those kinds of applicators anyway, when you're creating a topical, uh, it just obviously putting your hands in, it can, it, it's, um, messier and yeah. everywhere so like sometimes i if i just want shoulder or neck relief i've got it all over my hands as well which because i have a little arthritis is probably not so bad uh but i love the applicators that are so specific and they don't get your hands all all dirty right. all right let's get back to the important stuff the ingredients okay i know that you talk a lot about farm to table cbd rich whole cannabis Tell me what that is and how do you get a hold of it? Okay, so one of the things, my hands are a little greasy now. <laughs> I'm sure they are. <laughs> I was watching you. <laughs> I was about if you had the apple, uh, your hands would not be greasy. <laughs> it smells good though. I'm just, I'm kind of enjoying this now. Okay. Um, so I'll pick up my book here. My hands aren't too. Uh, Kim is asking good. what works best for a roll on application. And that would be something that's a little more liquidy, like an oil, correct? So, yes. So here's my suggestion. I'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, so there are certain fats that are um, high in oleic acid. Right. And oleic acid has been used for more than 150 years in pharmaceutical preparations, topical pharmaceutical preparations, to enhance penetration through the skin. And so when I make so uh, a, a an oil such as olive oil, which is something I use very commonly in my oh, recipes, or almond oil, um, you do have to be careful with almond oil because if someone has a tree nut allergy, they can react to that. So you want to make sure if you're making this for someone that you know what they're you know, if they, if they have any issues with any of your ingredients. Um, so there's, you can look up the, the profiles of oils online and find out which ones have higher oleic acid content. Now, I will say something here, Rich. One thing that's very popular in the cannabis community is, uh, is making topicals with coconut oil. MCT oil, really, right? Yeah, so well, coconut oil, because it can easily be turned into a salve. Okay. Because it's harder. And also, an MCT oil is another thing that you can make, that okay. you hear, see people make topicals with. Now, um, most of the recipes you'll find online for a can of salve will include coconut oil. Okay. Here's an issue with coconut oil. There are two issues with it. One, um, if you, and I've had some really interesting discussions with um, some estheticians about this, who, uh, coconut oil is what is known as accommodogenic, which means that it is a poor clogging, um, it can break you out in little bumps, even though coconut oil does have some, um, antibacterial effects, the fact that it is comedogenic, it can cl clog your pores. The other aspect of coconut oil is that it is not high in oleic acid at all. So it is not going to help with the, with deeper penetration. So if you are, if you're seeking a stab or a lotion and, and you want something that has that more of that deeper penetration, you want to seek out or make something that is high in oleic acid. So in my book, um, all of the uh, recipes, that, all of the topical recipes that I have in here include oils that are high in oleic acid. There's a whole bunch of them. Even cocoa butter is high in oleic acid. Okay. What about shea butter? Yes, shea butter is high okay. in oleic acid too. Interesting. So one of the things I was thinking about on the coconut oil front, mm -hmm. the opposite is true when you ingest it. So a lot of the oils, uh, the CBD oils that you take as drops using MCT oil, my understanding is it becomes more bioavailable. And so the absorption rate internally is good. I did not realize the absorption rate topically is not. So 
That is really I, I would like to see the evidence. I'd like to see some actual evidence for that. I have a study out of a university in, I believe it's the Netherlands, and I would be happy to send this after, after our chat, a really good chemistry study that was done at um, a university uh, which talks about, uh, shows the differences between extractions with a cannabinoid with olive oil and it compares it to other extractions such as naphtha and even ethanol. And olive oil came out on top as far as uh, being able to extract the most cannabinoids. And this is, it's a very interesting study. It's one of my favorites to send around. So um, I will make this resource available to you and That's your great. and your uh, audience uh, after our chat today so that okay. they can read this study. Because I'm a big advocate of olive oil. And this, actually, this university chemistry study is one of the reasons why. Okay, well, I, I'm not going to really go into uh, why are ingestible drops usually not made with olive oil since we're talking topicals. Let's, I'm going to try to keep us on track. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but great. if you can tell me again, I was uh, wondering about this farm to table CBD rich whole okay. cannabis. Tell me what that okay. is. How do you define that? And what, and what do you use? Like, how do you obtain it? What are you using? Um, okay. Farm to table CBD rich whole cannabis. Define okay. that. Okay, exactly what it says it is. So this is uh, either you've obtained this from a farmer, whole plant, flower, or just a whole plant. You've grown it yourself, mm. or you've obtained that from a farmer. Even even if you buy flowers at a dispensary, that would be whole plant. Okay. As opposed to something that's already been extracted. Got it. So you're going to do right. your own extraction? Is that what we're... Right. Okay. Right. So you... And and the best... Uh, let's look in my book here. I'm going to show you a really nice picture because one of the things in this book, this book was dedicated to some farmers that... Um, and this is a really beautiful oh, picture wow. of one of the farms. Nice. The, one of the, the um, CBD farms that I visited when I was writing this book. So when we're talking and CBD farm, what you what you really mean is it's a hemp farm. So it's the cannabis sativa plant that is the low resin plant called hemp, right? Because no. you don't grow CBD, you grow hemp and you extract the CBD from it, right? No, this is a this would be a so that's CBD. Cannabis. Okay, cannabis and hemp are the same thing. They're both right. cannabis sativa. Okay. Uh, and so this is this is C, a C, high CBD, and high there CBD is strain. some THC. It is a high CBD strain. Got it. Yeah. Uh, it's actually the strain that you're looking at here is called Harley Sue, and I believe it is eighteen. Typically, it's eighteen percent CBD and three oh. percent THC. Tell me the name again. I didn't quite get it. Harley, Harley Sue. Harley. So it's a cross between Sour Tsunami and um, it's T S. Oh. I just I just figured that out. T S U right. Harley Sue. Yeah, right. So okay, it's a, it's a cross between Harlequin, which is a CBD rich strain that also has some THC in it. Yep. Now, you know, the things that I say in this book can also be applicable if you're growing something like I'm growing right now. I'm growing cherry wine. And cherry wine is what you would call a hemp strain in that it's below that federal limit of 0.30%. So the way that the federal government defines hemp is anything that is 0.30% is it THC. A, is it? It's 0.3%, right? So, so really, no, it's 0. No, 0.30. Hold on a sec. That, I, I have not heard it say that said that way, and I get confused myself. Um, percent of THC. So, the idea it has to have a minimal level of THC. And the, yeah. the federal government defines hemp 
as any cannabis sativa plant that is below 0.30% THC. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I think I, I think the way everyone says it is 0.3%. That's kind 0. of- 0.3, 0.3, it's the same thing. Yeah, 0. okay. 0.3. Good, good. Yeah. I, we're speaking the same language, but I just yeah. always, I had to learn how to say it that way. I'm, I'm numerically dyslexic, so I had to learn yeah. how to say 0.3% because I used to say it wrong. And I used to say totally way too it. much percent of THC. <laughs> I totally okay. get it. So, all right. So we're talking about getting your flower, getting the plant uh, directly, you know, as close to the uh-huh. natural form as possible. Yes, right. right. So directly from a farmer, direct, so this book, really celebrates the farmers who grow um, CBD rich cannabis, whether that it, whether they are growing below the federal limit, which would be hemp, or whether they are growing within the state legal um, type of CBD rich cannabis. Now, one of the reasons that this was really important to me Uh, One of the reasons that this was really important to me to write about this is because there seems to be such a separation of, um, you know, uh, retail CBD. Not that there aren't good retail CBD products. Mm -hmm. There absolutely are. But... I think, you know, and I've heard, I, you know, I've heard some people, some of these gals that sell CBD oil online, I've heard them do their Facebook lives and say, well, this isn't marijuana. You don't have to worry about it. It's not marijuana. And I'm just like, gosh, you know, that's just so, that's not true. Right. And I think it's a hard not to scare people who That's are right. hesitant about getting something from the cannabis plant. Let's get back to topicals. Got to stay on track. We only have about 20 minutes left and I do okay. want to open it up to some more questions from others. So if you are watching live right now, please type your question in the chat. I'll keep an eye on that and we'll get to your questions before we're done. So back to uh, first you get your plant or flower. So you get your material, your plant material, which can be a cannabis flower or it can be hemp flower, which is cannabis, but it's higher in CBD, much lower in THC. Now, what do you do? You've got flower. What next? Okay. So this is a picture of a CBD flower and some homemade CBD oil. Okay. What do you use to do the extraction? Well, you can do it a number of ways. I describe this in my book. I give a few recipes for this. I have one recipe that is absolutely outstanding um, that was given to me by the same farmer that um, I took pictures of his farm and for this book. Um, and it is made It is made over an, a 36 hour period, I believe. I, I can't remember. Was it 18 or 36? I'll have to go back here and look at the recipe. It's but a it, sort it, of like slow it, cooking. Slow cooking. He used MCT oil and um, hit cannabis flowers. And this was at a low temperature uh, because typically, you know, the temperatures to do the decarb are going to be in the C50 range. Okay, this so hold on one second. Decarb, for anyone who doesn't know, is decarboxylation. Mm, okay. <laughs> decarboxylation. Okay. Thank you. And that's why we all say decarb. So decarb is the heating or the warming of the plant material in order to activate it. Uh, and because in its natural form, all of the chemical compounds called cannabinoids are in the acid form. So you heat it up to turn it into the non-acid form, the you know the THC and the CBD instead of the THCA, CBDA. Um, if you, if okay. you want to, because some right. people actually prefer True. the um, the A form, right? You know, yeah, the non-decarb form. So it's up to you what you think is best works best for you. Okay. Um, so Perfect. this decarb, his decarb was done at 180 degrees over 
I believe, at about an 18 to 36 hour period. Okay, so, so lower temp and sure slower longer cooking. time. And is this in a crock pot or like? It was in a crock pot that he did this. Good use the for a flavor, pot. I've got a picture of that oil, as a matter okay. of fact, here. Well, well, we, it, <laughs> that, yeah. is, that is actually um, his oil. And wow. this stuff tasted like it was infused with mint, and it had nothing else except cannabis. So mm -hmm. it preserved, it did something with the terpenes. But it was such a beautiful mint flavor. I could hardly believe. I was like, "Wow, this is cannabis oil. It tastes like mint oil." So well, it was interesting. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, 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 it was. So okay, so terpenes. You mentioned terpenes. If anyone's new to to cannabis uh, flower, the cannabis plant, in addition to cannabinoids, one of the chemical compounds, there are also terpenes, and terpenes appear in a lot of our foods, a lot of the plants, uh, things that, that we are consuming today. It gives color, it gives taste, it gives smell, mm -hmm. and so when you're talking about topicals, terpenes can be a very important part of creating your topical for specific kinds of effects. So how do you, is this, is this the CBD oil that's super rich in terpenes that you've talked about? Or how do, you, how do you really make an oil that not only is rich in cannabinoids, but also in terpenes? Well, the recipe, I have a recipe, his actual recipe in, right. this, in my book. So if anyone wants to try that, um, it, I can attest to it being a wonderful extraction of the terpenes as well as the cannabinoids. He also had this oil tested at a lab because he is a, he or he was at that time a medical provider, so he had to get his oils That's tested. Interesting. And um, the profiles of they did a profile of the terpenes and the cannabinoids, and it was just it was really beautiful. So it had that. Um, um, they had a lot of pinene, which is a terpene, um, and um, I can't think right off the top of my head the one that makes the mint. Um, you know, I was trying. I was trying to remember which to, one is minty, and I couldn't. I couldn't remember offhand, and I wanted to look at um, it. I it starts with a C. It starts with a C. Carry on, not carry off. No, it's not. It's okay. not carry off a lean. That's close. That's and clove carnation. and black pepper. Carnation. Okay. Well, we'll see if we can we can we'll see if we can find that in a minute. We do have a couple of questions. So, here. Okay. Yeah. Let's do yeah. Questions. So, uh, what are some good sources for buying the flour, uh, cannabis flour or hemp flour? Dispensary would be good for cannabis flour or CBD rich flour. Now, when you're buying it in a dispensary, it typically will have some THC. Um, possibly even more THC than what uh, they say is, you know, legal, um, which is why you have to buy it in a dispensary. That's right. On hemp flour, uh, you they probably would. Do they sell hemp flour in dispensaries? That's um, actually some dispensaries will sell um, that low where there, there's hardly any, if you know, where it meets that federal where it limit. meets the standard, right? Okay, but also. There are hemp farmers in Kentucky and Tennessee now because it's legal to hunt. Uh, and one of them I would recommend Franny Farm. I don't know if you've ever heard of Say Franny Farm. Say that again, Farm. Franny, F-R-A-N-N-Y-S, Franny Farm. Okay. And that is a hemp farm and she sells hemp flour. Franny's, and, and she ships and it? this is out of Kentucky. And she I ships believe. it? Does she ship? Can yes. she allow to yes, ship? Yes, she does. Yes, she is awesome. allowed to. Yes. Um, so some of these farmers um, in those states will have uh, hemp flour that you can buy. And so that would be a way to do farm to table. Um, and yeah, so that's what I would say. If you can't grow your own at home, to, um, to look into that. Okay, we have another question here. Uh, if you don't want to use olive oil, what is a 
another oil. You mentioned almond oil is good unless someone has a nut allergy. And then butters like shea butter and cocoa butter would also be good. Any other oil you would recommend yeah. if they don't want mm -hmm. um, olive oil? What would you recommend? Okay, I would recommend camilla seed oil, which is the oil, uh, you know, tea, like iced tea, right? The tea plant, camilla. Oh. Um, yes, they're the seed of camilla makes an oil, which is very popular in Asian cuisine, by the way, and in K-beauty. If you're familiar with K-beauty, Korean mm -hmm. beauty products, very popular nowadays. Um, and K-beauty uses a lot of tea seed oil. Um, but you can buy tea seed oil, and that is very high in oleic acid. And I would recommend tea, you know, tea seed oil. Um, another one is rice bran oil. Now, rice bran oil. I haven't even heard of that. Rice bran oil. Okay. Rice bran oil tends to be a little on the greasy side, okay. maybe. I, I hate to use that word. It's high in oleic acid, but due to other compounds in it, it tends to kind of ride on the top of the skin more than tea seed oil. Tea seed oil, when you make something with tea seed oil, it's like right into your skin. It absorbs very quickly, which is why tea seed oil is something that I recommend. So rice bran oil is one. Rice bran is good also. Um, if you, I don't know, for older ladies like myself, um, menopausal kind of makes your skin kind of dry. And, mm -hmm. um, so I, I like rice bran oil for that. It's a traditional, uh, uh, oil for use on older skin. So, um, and what would be another one? High oleic sunflower oil hmm. would be something else. Uh, also mango seed butter is one of my favorites. This is so interesting. These are things that I actually have never even heard of. So I've typed in for anybody who's in the chat so you can see some of the things she's talking about. Um, I want to answer two questions. One question I want to, I, wa I would like us to go into now, you've got your extraction and you've decided on the oil that you want to use. Mm -hmm. What are your next steps? Steps. But first, I want to answer a question here from Kim. Do topicals enter the bloodstream? This is a really good question. It is. And I am going to, I have written about this on my website. Okay. And uh, I've written a couple of articles about it. And first of all, I want to say this. I have made and used a topical on my hips that I have actually gotten high from. And that is, a, I'm talking about a TH, a very high in THC. Okay. And it was completely by accident. I had made a, a hash oil and I was in ridiculous pain. I was crippled one morning I could because I have RA in my hip. Okay. And I took a hand, I took, man, I just like, put this stuff on and a whole bunch of it. And it was made with tea seed oil, by the way. Okay. <laughs> and about 30 minutes later, I was too high to drive the car to leave the house. Wow. And that's because tea seed oil with yeah. it has, is high in oleic acid, which is absorption. It, it, it could have been absorption. It, and the it amount? could have been my body, my personal body chemistry. Mm -hmm. It could have been that the oil, okay, I don't want to get just TMI here, but remember, I put it on my hip. Now, maybe somehow it migrated to a mucous membrane between my legs. Right, right, which then <laughs> means that it can absorb even more. Well, that is actually, that is a really good point. Now, so, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me explain some more about this. So yeah. one of the questions I frequently get is, will you fail a drug test on topicals? 
I get that all the time. <laughs> okay. The answer to that is you better tell people the answer to that is yes. You can fail a drug test on just using topicals. Potentially. I am not only, potentially. potentially but, right. here, but here's the thing. You can, as it? someone, if you make a topical, a company that's making a cannabis topical, especially a THC one. Now, and mostly this is directed towards the, you know, people who would make the THC uh, topicals. But you can't predict the way that someone is going to use a topical. For example, I could put a topical on my knees and then forget and maybe touch my mouth or my eyes or touch another mucous membrane. You know, people are always touching. Uh, you don't realize how many times right. a day that you're touching your face and your mouth with your hands. And so for a topical maker to say, well, we can absolutely guarantee that you are yeah. not going to test positive. That is not a good thing to tell consumers. I agree. Consumers should be aware that the possibility is always there. Yep. That they could test positive. And yep. if you're testing positive from a topical, that means it did get into your bloodstream. Right. And, and it, but it does need that active ingredient that increases absorption because some of the products that you make with a CBD or hemp oil um, will just sit on the surface of your skin. But back to what you said, potentially touching a mucous membrane, then all bets are off. So we, right. ne we never say, never. <laughs> right, that's, and that's a really good thing. Now you've probably seen in the dispensaries these pack, these THC patches. Patches, yeah. And people get psychoactive effects. They yep. put the patch on, and they get the psychoactive effects of the THC, that's because the patches contain uh, pharmaceutical penetration enhancers like mm -hmm. oleic acid. So exactly. there are a whole bunch of different types of pharmaceutical penetration enhancers, and that just happens to be one of them. And it's naturally right. occurring in some oils. Yep. So another question we have, um, back to purchasing. If you wanted to order hemp seeds, to grow your own hemp flower, cannabis plant, um, where could you buy quality seeds? Um, I, I have actually bought, my cherry wine, I bought from Green Point Seeds. They're out of Colorado. Green Point Seeds, okay. Green Point Seeds. So if you do a search for that online, and they, their price, for a packet of 10 seeds is pretty reasonable. It's like $30. Some of these seed sellers, they want like $100 for a pack of 10 seeds. So wow. I feel like this is a good deal. And, and once you have a pack of seeds, you can keep producing your own seeds if you want. So, your own plants? Yes. So then, okay, so let's just go right back to the topical part. We've got about 10, 15 minutes left. We're talking about, we've got our extracted oil um, with cannabinoids and terpenes. It's rich, it's straight from the farm. And then we've got our oil of choice. How do we mix things together and do we put on anything else in there? Okay, so um, let's say that you have decided to extract your cannabis into tea seed oil. And that's going to be your base. Now you want to make some lotion cubes. So what you're going to do is you're going to take some aloe leaves. You have to create an emulsification to make lotion. And, and that means that's, that's blending with some uh, ingredients. So what happens, emulsification is just so that the molecules, so the oil and water, um, are actually emulsified together. They come together. Okay. Uh, instead of, because typically what happens, you mix oil and water together, oil sits on top and the yeah. water goes down here. So um, emulsification is the process that brings those together. And in a good quality emulsification, they should stay together. Sometimes, though, when you're working with more of these natural ingredients as opposed to um, 
industrial ingredients, like you're working with whole plant stuff, sometimes you got to shake that lotion, you know, to get things back together. But in general, a good emulsification shouldn't separate too much. And definitely once you, if you're going to make it into ice cubes, like the lotion cubes I was talking about, um, you know, those, those won't separate at all. Right. Um, so okay. you, you want to take your oil if you want to make a lotion and to start the emulsification process, you want to get your, get some, uh, some fresh aloe vera leaves. So this, this is the technique I use because aloe vera, um, has that fiber in it, that muce, uh, what do you call that? Mucilage, the, okay. the sticky oh, yeah. stuff. And that is, that will cause an emulsification between the oil and the water. Um, so you, you can scrape those leaves and put your oil in your blender. And you don't want to put the whole leaf in because you don't want all the green stuff. Just scrape, scrape that. Put the oil and that in the blender and blend that up. And that should emulsify. Now, now you have a lotion. Just those uh -huh. two ingredients, just those two ingredients, the oil that you've made with your whole plant and aloe vera leaf, or the, the uh, scrape the inside of the aloe vera leaf, the juice and the meat. Um, and I don't recommend bottled aloe vera juice because you don't get as much of the, um, the, the fiber compound, oh, the, oh, the fiber. Citrus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and, which is what you need to um, to make this emulsification. Okay. So um, cut a couple big leaves. Like if I had, for example, a quick recipe, I'll just give you a quick recipe here. Okay. So um, let's say you have a half a cup of oil you just made with some whole CBD flowers. Um, so you're going to put that in the blender and you're going to take, I don't know, about 12... 10, 10 to 12 inches of um, aloe vera leaf that's sliced open and completely scraped out two of those. Okay. And then run everything through the blender and just blend it all up. And then there's your lotion. And you can pour that into ice cube trays and then store it in the freezer and take it out whenever you need it. The other great thing about aloe vera um, <clears throat> Is that it also has uh, penetrating compounds and it's oh, similar wow. to oleic acid. So that's a quick recipe. That is a quick recipe. How does that <laughs> recipe? So it is. For, for those of us who uh, kind of want the easy way out, is it bad for us to purchase an already extracted oil, particularly from some of the uh, better known companies that are producing really nice oils. Could we take their oil and add it to some other ingredients we have at home? Sure. Okay, because I, I, sure. I don't, not that I don't, I'm a lazy person, but I'm not sure how much of this process I would end up well, doing. You know, what's interesting is, is that this new book that I have coming July 21st is just about that. Whereas this book is a celebration of Farm to table specifically. Mm. Okay. Um, the book that's coming in July is about um, you know how to purchase a good oil nice. and how to use yeah. an oil that's already made in in various kinds of recipes. Nice. Oh, that sounds excellent. Tell me the name of the new book again. CBD and hemp remedies. CBD and hemp remedies, and that's available in July twenty first. Yes. Excellent. July 21st. All right. Perfect. So obviously we would love everyone to purchase your book, CBD Every Day, your original book, The Cannabis. What is it again? The Spa. The Cannabis Spa at Home. Cannabis and Spa at Home. I also, also have another book. Um, I told you all she's written a lot of books. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so this is this was actually re-released this year. Well, this one was published in 2017. It's high tea. tea. Gracious cannabis and, tea time. All right. And then, but it was re-released this year. I All natural cannabis recipes for relaxation and wellness. Very. Yes. 
So um, this is all, you know, mostly beverages and herbal remedies. Um, and then I also, um, I don't know if you know Dr. Rashna Patel. Oh, I think so. Yes, yeah. I wrote this book with Dr. Patel. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. He actually wrote all the medical stuff, and I wrote all the recipes in the book. Fantastic. That is so, sort of like me and Dr. Junella Chin. We wrote CBD, uh, cannabis and CBD for health and wellness, and she wrote a lot of the patient case studies. That sounds like a fantastic book, too. I knew you had written a lot of books. But the one that's coming mm -hmm. up, if you're watching this June, July, or after that, uh, July 21st, CBD and Hemp Remedies is coming up. I, we're coming to the end of our time. Is there okay, any great. other last minute tip that you want to give our, well, our viewers? I'll tell you what, I would like you to pick a winner today out of the chat room and I will send them an autographed copy of CBD every day. Okay, so I'm gonna do this really quickly, everybody. This is how I'm doing it, full transparency. I use a site called random.org. I put in the number of uh, people who are in the chat room at this very moment. Let's see if I can, there we go. And then I, it will generate a random number and then I'm going to count down from the top and I will tell you who the winner is. And the winner of the CBD every day, Christy Collins. Okay, Hi. great. All right, Christy, so here's the thing. You need to send to me right now, before we hang up, We, I need in, in the chat room, just to me, make sure you only choose a, 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 all att a panelists only, not attendees, unless you want everyone to have your email address. Send me your email address right now, or my email address, and I will type it in for everybody. It's okay if everyone knows mine. I just figured you didn't want everyone to know yours. Aliza at elementa.com. Email me or privately chat to me right now, your email address, and I will get in touch. Then you can send me your address. Uh, I will send it to Sandra, and she will send you the book. All right. Fantastic. That is so awesome. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're really always excited to share with you incredible information uh, from experts, from authors on wellness. Be well, everybody. Okay, I had a great time. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You know what? One more time. One more second. We have another minute. Last minute tips. Just really quick. Your favorite kinds of things to keep in mind. Oh gosh, topics. that's so hard. To, oh. um, <laughs> I know, no. just put you on the spot. No, there's so many things. I, you oh, know, I think here's here's one. Uh, if you can, fragrance. So I know that the hemp plant can be naturally fragrant, depending on the terpene profile. It could mm -hmm. be minty. It could be almost more floral. But if you, especially when you have sensitivities, how do you add fragrance in? Like what okay, so in? that in this book. Um, uh, this, all of the fragrance is created with whole aromatic plants. So there are, are no essential oils in this book. Oh, okay. So it, the technique is a technique known as uh, enfleurage, which is a very old French technique for creating perfumes. It's layering natural aromatics on top of oils and either drying the, the aromatics out by heat and then filtering the oil from the aromatics. So similar to the way you would make cannabis oil, except you use whole plant, whole aromatic plants, like, I don't know, geranium or lavender or mint leaves or pine needles. And so it uses a whole, and the difference between using whole aromatic and an essential oil is that whole aromatic they have a fresher fragrance. They are less, uh, they, I wouldn't say less, I don't want to say they are less fragrant than essential oils, but they are, they are more subtle. So when you create fragrance with whole aromatics, you get a more subtle fragrance than you would with an essential oil. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, in other words, you know, you, you're not going to get like an overpowering, it's hard to make mistakes with whole aromatics, whereas essential oils, 
can be overused. They can be, um, they can create, you know, overpowering fragrances. Mm. So that's what this book is all about using whole aromatics and how to and make topicals, cannabis topicals with whole cannabis and whole aromatic plants. And then my book coming in July um, does have some essential oil content in it. Of okay. making using essential oils with um, CBD oil. Excellent. That was really helpful. That was definitely one of the questions I, I had. So thank you again, Sandra, for spending time with us, giving us some of your wisdom on creating topicals at home, the DIY way. All right, everybody. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Everyone take care. Bye now.